this? And what would you say to people who are looking for sustainability? So I, since I, I think, was approaching it more from just the online business coaching perspective as opposed to from the financial coaching perspective, I started off by just deciding what I needed to charge in order for this to work. And it started less than I charge now in order to make it reasonably feasible. And then naturally over time, you obviously just see, okay, here's a chunk of people who are able to pay this and here's a chunk who aren't. And I would say two things I want to say. One is that I've found other ways to be of service to people in communities that wouldn't be able to pay me themselves. I used to work, I'd say for maybe two years, I did coaching for this startup that works with family caregivers and they're working on getting family caregivers compensated for the caregiving duties that they pay. So instead of a family being able to use insurance to hire an outside nurse, they would be able to use insurance to hire a family member. Better for all. And most of these people were quite low income. So I was able to coach them, but they never had to pay me. The startup paid me. And so that was a really lovely, rewarding way to be able to still help people at a different demographic in a way that I could still make the rate I needed to make. And then also, I think in terms of working with higher income people or people with higher net worths, I think one thing that coaches need to do in order to be able to consider it a worthy demographic on their own end is to get over the mental hurdle of not believing that those people's problems are real and not believing that those people's problems are just as worthy of help. I work with somebody who has a budget of about $30,000 a month and she has trouble sticking to it. And that is not a problem that I, Kate Grayson, can relate to. But that doesn't mean that her problem isn't real and isn't deeply psychologically challenging for her, isn't harming her relationships, her life, the same way that would be true at a $3,000 budget. So I, I completely understand coaches might not want to work with these demographics because it can feel alienating. And I think coaches are often, financial coaches, often used to being in a, quote, better financial situation than the people they are serving, right? Because they're showing through example. I am not in a, quote, better situation than this person. I My budget is smaller than hers. But I am, quote, better in the sense that I'm able to live within my means and meet my savings goals and my spending goals and all of that. So I think a big hurdle is just, frankly, us as the coaching community, understanding that people have equal problems at any income level. Just to add in also to your other question, yes, obviously these people are just more able to pay me. And I feel really good knowing that I can charge a rate that I feel great about at the same time that I have full confidence it will triple or quadruple its value to people at this. I don't want to say everybody I work with is in the $30,000 a month income bracket. That's not the case. I have confidence that the price that I charge is what I need to charge for myself. And with my kind of bracket of customers, it will pay itself back for them tenfold. And that's a situation that feels nice. I also don't want to go to somebody who their money should be going towards their bills. But I don't want to say to them, you need to pay me this because that, that right. doesn't feel no, good. I, so I actually wrote a book here called Be Discovered, How to Market Your Financial Coaching Business. Everything from how to do a webinar to doing on-demand webinars to setting up online communities to figuring out how you're going to partner with on a podcast to doing a podcast alone to using social media and YouTube and paying for ads on Facebook versus LinkedIn and all sorts of stuff. You're going to find more stuff in here than you are ever going to be able to explore. Chapter 65, how to use AI, how not to lose your ideas. 69, how to start a podcast. 70, the best podcast platforms for beginners. Chapter 99, why you need Toastmasters. Chapter 98, how to build a wow presentation. Chapter 100, how to get booked as a speaker. So I would highly encourage you to go grab it now. I am hoping that this and the content that I'm producing here on the channel is helping you grow your business. I will see you soon.